Electro. Okay, welcome everybody to, uh, first of all, Happy New Year. <laughs> Here we go, uh, 2024. Um, hard to believe uh, we're already there. Uh, didn't seem that long ago. Uh, that still was a few months away, but uh, that just went really fast. Um, but here we are uh, starting off with a really, really great tasting uh, with the Saratoga Whiskey Club. Uh, this is our tasting number 145. Um, I'm curious where we're going to end this year with what number. Um, I guess it'll de depend on how much energy I have. <laughs> but um, there's a lot of whiskey to try. Um, and Holly have a pretty aggressive, Holly and I have a pretty aggressive plan on doing tastings this year, not just for the club, but some for the shop as well. Um, there's just a lot of great opportunity to try a lot of great things. So, uh, and now that travel is kind of back going normal again, we even get more bottles uh, that are unique like tonight's tasting. Um, four of these six are bottles that I picked up in Kentucky in October. Um, I've been staring at them for the last two months. It's pretty <laughs> torturous to, uh, to stare at some of these, um, especially because you see people drinking them and liking them. And then you're like, oh, boy, I can't wait. So, um, yeah, so four of these are from that trip in October. Um, I actually have a couple people here in the shop who were on that trip with me. Uh, we had a really great trip and got some really great bottles along the way. Um, but we are going to, there is a scorecard online. If you want to use that, you can. Um, I didn't actually make scorecards here. So if you do want to score, just maybe write it on the paper. I've got pens up there if you need it. But um, scoring, I'm actually going to pay more attention to scoring this year. I've, I've been so busy the last couple of years that I've kind of let that go a little to the wayside. I still have all of them uh, there that I can go back and and look at, but um, I'm gonna try and get the scores out quickly this year um, and see if I can do that. Um, but yeah, so welcome everybody. Let's go ahead and dive right into this. Um, we're starting out with a pretty special um, bottle. Um, this is the Blood Oath from Lux Row uh, Distillers. Um, I think it was, maybe it was tasting number five of the club. So we're going way back to 2016. Um, it was a summer tasting. We did our uh, annual dinner, which I had in my backyard at the time. And we had a blood oath. And I'm trying to remember what pack number it was, but it was pretty old. It was probably blood oath pack number two. Um, I'm thinking, I can't remember exactly. It's on our website, but um, it was a long time ago. Um, and so here we are with Blood Oath Pack number nine. Um, this is a special release that's become quite allocated and, and expensive um, for most people, um, if they even see it on the shelf. Um, I did buy this at the distillery. Fortunately, in the fall, uh, when you visit Lux Road Distillers, which is right in Bardstown, um, they have some unique bottles uh, available. Um, actually, two of the bottles we're tasting tonight um, came from Lux Row uh, from that visit uh, just to their gift shop. I didn't even do a, a distillery tour or anything. It was just pop in, see what they had. We had a little bit of time and uh, was pretty excited that they had both the Blood Oath Pack 9 and they had this 12-year um, Lux Row kind of limited edition distillery release um, as well. So we're starting with the Blood Oath. It is actually our lowest uh, proof of the night. So that's kind of why I'm starting with it. I want our palates to be able to taste it. Um, some of these whiskeys can get up there in ABV um, and can um, hide some of the notes uh, with this. But what they do with the Blood Oath um, is usually a blend of different bourbons. And then they usually finish them in some kind of barrel to make them unique. Um, oh, Holly's joining us now. Um, so this one, this one is a combination of a 16 year old, uh, bourbon and all of these are high rye bourbons, a 16 year old bourbon, 
um, a luscious 12 year old and a seven year old finished in Spanish Oloroso sherry casks. So we're starting to see that more and more in the bourbon world where they're taking bourbon and they're finishing them in different types of barrels, especially wine barrels and sherry barrels, um, adds a little sweetness to it. So um, this one's bottled at 49.3% or 98.6 proof. Um, comes in a fancy wooden box. This is the box, pretty cool. And the bottle itself is actually a pretty, pretty good looking bottle too. Um, <laughs> oh, there were some people walking by. <laughs> I'm getting Charles, the dregs of, of the bottle is, here. Is Lux, Row, is Lux Row kind of like a Nulu? They buy the um, bourbon and then finish it? So Lux Row is actually making whiskey as well. Um, okay. They're they're just what they do with Blood Oath though is um, they take sourced whiskey for for their Blood Oath because these are older uh, whiskeys. Blood Lux Row just started making uh, really kind of spirit in 2018, so they're only five years old at this point. Um, and I did hear though that they will be releasing some of their own whiskey soon. Um, so it's going to be around that five or six year mark. Uh, Do you know how long it was in Cherry? Um, and they are owned by MGP now. Yes. It doesn't say how long it's finished. It doesn't say, can you barely pick it out? Oh, really? Yeah. It's very delicate. Very. All right. So Jan says, um, uh, that it's very kind of delicate or hard to pick out the sherry. So I'm curious if anybody else gets the sherry notes on this. Um, yeah, I, I'm seriously compromised tonight. I can't smell anything and I can hardly taste anything. It's the COVID. It's bad night to have <laughs> during the advent calendar fortunately <laughs> yeah that's good yeah Vinny. bourbon ought to help cure you <laughs> anybody got sherry, sherry notes on this a, a little bit it is delicate yeah i i get a little bit of like a fig no yeah. that yeah. maybe has to do with the sherry on the nose anyway yeah. i'm getting a little on the finish at the, at the, end the very the end yeah. Very end of the finish. Yeah, it's on the finish for me. It starts to have that kind of cocoa dry mm -hmm. baking spice. It's probably not a big percentage of the blend. It doesn't feel like it's probably a pretty small percentage. That's one of the things. Um, they're they're not extremely. Uh, they're not as transparent as like Bardstown Bourbon Company, where they'll give you the exact percentages of every component. Um, Blood Oath is a pretty big release. Actually, I would be curious to know how many bottles they release of this. Um, did you get a bottle of this, Jan? I did not. No. What's the ABV? I missed it. It's 49.3. Thank you. Three rips. Well, I don't know if I'm going to score tonight. It's okay. It's yeah, probably not a good idea for you to score, uh, Vinny. <laughs> I'm saving half of it so that once this passes, I'll be able to taste it. So let's go in the shop. <laughs> so um, the price of this has been creeping up. Now, when we first bought Blood Oath six years ago, um, it was probably around $90 a bottle. It's about double that now, um, oh. even at the distillery. Um, these are all actually, most of the whiskeys we're drinking tonight are quite expensive bottles. Um, I think this one was 160 or so on the at the distillery. Uh, but I'm seeing them online for sale right now for $300 and I think that's crazy. Um, Okay, so here you go. 
So 51,000 bottles of wow. this. 51,000. Yeah. Shit. Ooh. And that's how much? 160. So the MSRP is 129.99. That's what the MSRP is. I know at the distillery they were charging, I think at least $20 more than MSRP, <clears throat> which is crazy. I mean, that's like, why are you have an MSRP if, you're, if your distillery is not even going to yeah, charge that? Um, um, but yeah, they, so what they do, and this is kind of interesting, they hold back 1,400 bottles um, for the next Blood Oath trilogy pack. Uh, so I don't know why they do that, but whatever. Um, they put it in the next pack and get more money. Yeah. Because yeah. they're doing it every three years. The trilogy is coming out. It's going to be 500 bucks. Right? Yeah. yeah, I don't even know what the trilogy I've never seen one. pack is. I've never yeah. seen one. Well, it'd be three bottles. I bet it's three bottles. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but take three years of do so they, I'm guessing they have 1,500 trilogy packs. Do they do anything with that? Like, do they br blend them together or is it just a. No, I think uh, they, I'm guessing they sell them as a bundle. As a pack, yeah, yeah. yeah, I've seen them sold as a bundle. That's oh, you have that's the way I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen them sold together, but I don't think they they blend them or do anything like that. They hold the bottles, and then when they have number ten, 10 and eleven or whatever, they'll sell them in three packs. Yeah, well, it sounds like this isn't the last bottle of the trilogy. This is for they said for future trilogy. So you have to wait wait to get this one in your trilogy pack. What do you guys think? Pack nine, so that kind of makes sense. It's a third one. Well, it said they're holding this one back for future trilogy releases. So I don't think they started the trilogy right off the oh, bat. Oh, maybe not. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. What do you guys think of this one? Okay. I'm just nodding. You know, I, I I hate to say I don't love it. I I don't love the last Blood Oath um, that we had either. I think that was the Pact Eight. Um, particularly like when I think of the price and I think of how allocated it is, I like the nose, um, but the palette to me is like it, missing something like fruity or missing something sweet. I don't know. I get like sawdust and crackers and like a light bitterness. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Holly, Holly mentioned oak, getting a lot of oak influence. That yeah, 16 year old bourbon, right? Yeah, 16 year old bourbon in here. So you got to think about that. Um, I think I could find four bottles I like as well or better for the same money. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, I mean go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, you know, I mean, with, with some of these releases, these annual one off kind of releases it's more about did you get the release than actually what's in the bottle um unfortunately um and we see that in all sorts of things right um not just luxro products but uh everybody's clamoring for these september october releases of whatever it is and maybe they're overhyped or people are just buying them for the name but at least we're getting to try it and see what it's like uh, without yeah, having right. to spend uh, $150. So When I saw this on the list, I was very excited because I love the six and seven. You know, I didn't like the eight as well, but uh, I like this one less than the eight. It's just, there's, it doesn't, it's like there's nothing special about it. It's sort of all muted to okay. me. And, and Charles, you might have gotten it for that at the distillery, but if you Google it online, I saw one place selling it for two forty, and they were the standout low price. Yeah, I'm seeing three hundred dollars. This kind yeah, of three hundred seems to be the average. Yeah, yeah, which is absolutely crazy. That's what that's what I was thinking was three hundred when I said I could probably buy four bottles for the price. You know, <laughs> right? Three hundred for any whiskey is absolutely crazy. So many good things to drink. That aren't going to cost you that much. Yeah. Oh. Well, we see that all the time. So. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to listen. I'm glad to hear that some people liked former blood blood oath um, 
releases though because i now having the eight and nine i kind of uh i don't know i don't know that i'd go for a blood oath again but it sounds like some in the past were good well if we can keep trying them that's all that matters right i mean that's yeah. you know the joy of whiskey for me isn't necessarily having to own a bottle it's more about being able to try as much as possible you know and and yeah okay if you love it it would be great if you could get a bottle but just the fact that you can try it to me is more important than you know i don't know that's what makes the club so fun so yeah agree all right all right you guys ready to move on yeah he already has <laughs> i can't control the crowd here if it gets too loud, let me know too, because uh, we'll have to send you a directional mic next year. For uh, I have, I have a mic. I have a really good mic. Right, mic. directional. Well, it's got a thing on it that captures the reverb and all that. Are you hearing a lot of background noise? Moderate now. Moderate. Oh. I can't get louder. Yeah, I wouldn't say more than usual, but it's not it's not distracting to me. It you it's still just like wah 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 wah. You can't hear what they're saying. I think if you could hear what people were saying, it would be you know distracting. We're yeah. only on the first one there, man. Luke, did you uh, used to Luke. do the Charlie Brown voiceover for the adults? Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> That's what I was going for. <laughs> um, but no, maybe they could uh they could hire me. Somebody send me send me an offer. Okay, we're going to move on. Let me pull up my notes on this next one. All right, so uh, it wasn't too long ago that uh, we had our rep come to the shop from um, Opichi, and we have a really, really great um, rep, newer rep from Opichi. We're really happy with him, uh, Brendan. And um, we were able to taste some of these 2XO uh, releases, and they're really becoming very popular um, now. Uh, let me pull it up here. Um, so the, the big story behind um, this brand, which is two times Oak, that's what the 2XO stands for, is Dixon Deadman. Um, some of you might have heard of Dixon Deadman. Um, but so back in, back in the 19th century, there was a brand there was a distillery called Kentucky Owl. Um, it actually was a pretty, pretty well-known distillery back then. And it went kind of defunct like a lot of these distilleries in Kentucky during the bad times. Um, but Dixon Deadman, it was his great, great grandfather who was, who started up Kentucky Owl um, back then in the late 1800s. And so Dixon, it was in 20. Uh, 14, I think, or 2016, I can't remember exactly. He re, uh, revitalized Kentucky Owl and got brought the name back. Um, and actually, some of those early Kentucky Owl releases were really, really good. Um, I remember having, and I think it was the end of 2016, uh, one of their rye whiskeys. Um, and again, it was sourced. All the, all the stuff back then was pretty much sourced. Um, but the Kentucky Owl Rye that I had, I think it might have even been the first release, was fantastic. Um, and then the bourbon started coming out um, once they kind of became more known. And and, um, and the bourbons were, were pretty good. And then before you knew it, they were purchased by a big conglomerate. Um, and, and the quality of everything kind of went downhill, uh, which is typical. Or not typical, but it can happen, I guess, with with brands when they make a lot of go money. downhill. It just well, it got did. well, the mainstream. price went up and the whiskey didn't get better. Let's put it that way. Uh, I can be pretty straightforward with that because I actually the the confiscated that I tasted I thought was horrible for two hundred and sixty dollars a bottle or whatever it was. So I'm going to be opinionated about. Kentucky. You're right about prices. Yeah. But it's not like the whiskey was terrible. It just was not priced correctly. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, but that's not a way to treat the consumer, right? I mean, you don't just jack up the price because you got purchased by, by some big, big company. But um, 
Dixon did leave, uh, which was pretty interesting. Uh, and then he started up this brand, uh, Two Times Oak. Um, and this one that we're drinking, hold on, guys. This one that we're drinking right now is called the Tribute Blend. Um, this is one of their, I guess, more premium releases, uh, part of the Icon series. Uh, this is the third small batch blend in the Icon series. Um, they're all one-off small batch releases. This one came out in September. Um, each blend is different, bears its own name, inspired by the story behind it. The tribute blend is a nod to Dixon's parents and the path they paved for him. Uh, the mouth feels viscous and rich. Um, so we tasted the regular 2XO and we really liked it a lot. We thought it was a great value bottle around $50. Um, but so we wanted to have some of these special bottles as well, um, since that one was so good. So this one's at ninety nine ninety nine. Um, yeah, we just have one bottle left of this actually at the moment. Um, but we can get more if people are interested in this one. Um, so the ABV on this one is 104 proof, 52%. So we've went up a little bit um, on the last one. Um, and it is double barreled so that's the, the thing to remember with all of their bottlings is that his whole shtick is the yeah. whole 2XO thing yeah. double barreling Everything. what do you mean double barrel? so it starts in a new charred barrel and then it's put in another yeah. new charred new barrel. barrel so you're getting extra double new charred notes that's why you know. 2XO is kind of synonymous with it. What, what is the purpose of that what is the, what is the more flavor, flavor. More flavor. Yeah. more flavor yeah Charles, what's the most expensive bourbon you've ever bought and tried or tried? What is the most expensive bourbon I've ever tried? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, the most overpriced bourbon I've ever tried was Pappy 23. Um, ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> to me, that was one of the worst Pappy releases or is one of the worst Pappy mm -hmm. releases. Um I mean, it's not like it's bad, but it's definitely not worth $5,000 or whatever people are selling it for these days. Um, I thought the 15-year-old Pappy was my favorite of all of them. Mm -hmm. um, What's even, would it even be worth that? No. Not, none of the Pappies are worth what they charge, period. Um, we actually did a really interesting tasting at Jan's house a couple of months ago. Jan lives in Troy. Mm -hmm. And he had out a Pappy 10 and a 12, right? Was it 10 and a 12? Uh, 10 and 12. And a, did I have my 20 out? No. Um, oh, did you have the 20 out? The 20. Oh, he had the 20 out as well. And we had some other whiskeys out, really, really good whiskeys. And the Pappies ended up like last <laughs> of, of all the whiskeys that we tasted. Um, so definitely just a craze, Buffalo Trace craze thing. Yeah. Um, you know, hard to get. Everybody knows the name, uh, but not worth it. Um, if you make a mediocre whiskey, just allocate it. Well, I mean, the truth is, they're really, I can understand how some scotch can be expensive because it's 30 or 40 years old or, you know, but bourbon should never be that expensive, period. Like, really, really, it shouldn't. Um, Anything over two hundred, three hundred dollars, it's just too much money for bourbon. It, 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 it truly is. Um, you know, some of the best ones I've had are are really expensive now, like the uh, William Larue Weller and the George T. Staggs. Those are fantastic Buffalo Trace releases, but they're going for you know a thousand to two thousand dollars a bottle now. I mean, it's. It's not worth that kind of money, <laughs> period. Uh, you know, so it's just so, so yeah. those those would be more investment bottles, right? If you were like, yeah, but I mean, that's and again, everybody can do whatever they want. I'm not going to say what's right or wrong, but uh, whiskey is meant to be shared, or if you are going to keep it for investment reasons. You know, hopefully you don't have to sell it at some point. And you can enjoy it later on in life. I mean, that's that's kind of my my the wine side. 
you, you see a wine that's like ridiculously overpriced and you buy it and it doubles, you know, in yeah. five years and you make a lot of money. I, I would be a very bad investor because I can't be told. <laughs> <laughs> but when you think about how good like some of the new riffs are or the new lose or some of the ones we've had for, you know, 50 to 100 bucks. What do you guys uh, think of this? It's hard to justify. I've had a couple of these days ago. Yeah. Does it taste? Does this taste watered down to you at all? No. I was I was gonna say I like it, but it doesn't have a real you know slap you in the face kind of character or anything. It's sort of the reason why nondescript to me. In another barrel. I, oh, mm -hmm. it's tasting a little light to me for whatever reason. Yeah, it it's seems like to me too. I get a lot of cinnamon, but I'd like a higher ABV. It doesn't taste to me 52% even, but maybe my, I haven't been drinking much this last 10 days or so. So maybe that's part of it. I just don't think it has a ton of character. It's just, you know, um, it's, it's good. It's fine. But it's not special. Maybe not my lack of taste, but I kind of feel the same, but, it, but then again, you know, I can't trust myself tonight. No. Uh, uh, do we know how, that, how old that is, Charles? How what? How old is Yeah, there's no age statement on this. He doesn't see where he's sourcing it from, right? No. Any guesses on where he's sourcing, Holly, this from? I'm going to say I have no. It's, does it say Kentucky on it? I'm looking right now. Uh, yeah, it's Kentucky. Actually, it says produced. It says Louisville. What? It says produced? produced Not it says produced and bottled by Prestige well, Beverage yeah. Group, Louisville, Kentucky. There's no way the water didn't do anything. No. Prestige. Um, let me look it up. Is that just first bottle? Well, it says produced. I've never heard of Prestige. Usually it says distilled. Yeah, it just says produced. Um, Strange. But I'm, I'm on the Vinny scale. That's hmm. very vague. It can be nice. So Dixon is 42 years old now. Um, Yeah. All right. Well, we can look into that. Yeah, I'm not sure about that either. I, it, now that you've mentioned, it, I don't even know who he was. Who was producing Kentucky Owl? I believe the rye that I had, the first release, was from MGP. Okay. Yeah. That's when sure. there were those really, really special barrels, you know, before everybody was gobbling up. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. MGP juice. Yeah, I like this one, but it it goes from like chocolate to oak spice to chocolate. It's, it's kind of jumpy for me. <laughs> but it's not dry, which can be a problem with double oak. But it's um, it's different. That's for sure. <laughs> You don't get a whole lot that's distinct on the the taste or the finish, like from other bourbons for me necessarily. But the nose, I had a lot to say. Like I, I get this like sort of cherry jelly beans and also a like slight jerky smell, almost like teriyaki meat or something like that. It's sweet. Uh, sweet smell. All right, so we're gonna move on. We're gonna we're gonna move on from two times oak. Um, all right, guys, we're gonna talk about the next whiskey. So hold up. All right, so we're gonna move on to Bardstown Bourbon Company. Uh, are we ready for that? Am I going too fast? Everybody good? Yeah. All right, so um, 
on our trip uh, in October, uh, we did go and have a really great experience at Bardstown Bourbon Company. Definitely one of the, the better um, distillery experiences you can have. A uh, really good restaurant there too. A lot of fun to see their big warehouses that they're just continually uh, growing and adding to. It's it's pretty crazy how quickly they're expanding. Um, but one of the cool things about Bardstown Bourbon Company is they do this collaboration series. Um, so the collaboration, I think the first one we had with them from the collaboration series was with um, a winery in California. I'm blanking on the name now. Um, shoot. But they, what's that? Pfeiffer Pavit. Yes, Pfeiffer Pavit. I love, I love that mentioned. one. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it was interesting um, when I was uh, driving down to Kentucky in October, I was listening to Bourbon Pursuit, uh, their podcast, um, and they were talking about, at one point, Woodford Reserve and how Woodford Reserve was one of the first distilleries um, a while ago, at least a decade ago, that was playing around with um, finishings on bourbon, uh, like wine finishes, uh, other other types of finishings. And at the time, everybody was like, what the hell are you doing? Like, this isn't the thing, this isn't what bourbon's about. And uh, it was kind of funny to hear that because they basically gave up on it uh, because there weren't enough people at the time that kind of bought into uh, finishing bourbon and, and other types of barrels. Um, and now you see it like crazy. Um, and Bardstown Bourbon Company is one of the kind of, I want to say, uh, you know, premier blenders of and finishers with with different types of barrels. Uh, so in our in our tasting that we had, hold on guys, okay. in our tasting that we had back in, uh, late November or, or in November, we had the four square rum uh, release. And then we also had uh, the Chateau Labad uh, release uh, with them. So, you know, they're doing all sorts of things, whether it's Armagnac, um, whether it's wine, whether it's rum. Uh, and then here we have this, this was a distillery only bottling. So you could only buy this at the distillery. This was not something that we're going to get in New York. Um, this is a collaborative with Chateau Doisy Dane. And I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, it's French. Um, and they're famous. They're a really famous uh, chateau that really focuses on uh, Bordeaux, but also uh, Sauterne. Sauterne is their big thing. So this is basically, I'll read it. Um, so this is a blend of 10-year Kentucky bourbon and six-year Indiana rye. So this is both a blend of bourbon and rye that's then finished in Sauterne barrels for seven months. And then it's finished again in new toasted oak for four weeks. So, I mean, come on. Like, well, how, how do you even, like, come up with that? I mean, I... It's it's just someone had a couple of drams to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You come up with that because you're otherwise saying mayday, mayday. Or there must be like some really good mushrooms in Kentucky or something. I have no idea, but uh, it was sourced in the beginning. I have I don't I, I don't know how they <laughs> That's not part of my tour, just so you know. <laughs> we don't do those things. All right. So this one is um, 54.5%. So we're, we're creeping up there. 109 proof. I have not had this. I don't think we were able to taste. We didn't taste no. this, right? No. You could buy a bottle, but you couldn't buy it. Yeah, so this is 200, this was $200 a bottle. So $199.99 um, at the distillery. Yeah, I don't know how they figured it out, but it's actually really nice. Is it? Yeah. I, I just smelled it. Oh. It's so flavorful. Yeah. Now, when I was pouring this and into the vials and into the glasses, it looked really good. <laughs> just the, 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 it was very syrupy and kind of thick. 
Um, it does. It has that kind of high viscosity. It, it, it's, so the color is beautiful. Yeah, beautiful color, for sure. Oh, that's cool. I got to take a picture of this one. I love that. Color. It was dry for me at first on the palette, but if I, once I let it open up and adjusted, it got that juicier quality match the nose. It took took my palate a minute though to get the sweet wine. So you actually can pick out the sauterne? Yeah, I mean it's like bubbly. I wrote I actually didn't know that it was sauterne. I did, I'm not familiar with this one. I wrote fruit, bubbly apples and banana bread. <laughs> That's So I must have gotten but it was it was quite dry that first sip for wow. me. Great. This is amazing. It's getting better and better. <laughs> this is one where I want a bottle. <laughs> yeah. You had a bottle. I'm, who's going yeah, to Kentucky? Gone. I'm going against my um, my strategy there of just tasting everything. I want one of these. <laughs> I'm going to have to save it a few days so I can see how amazing it is. But I do love Sorturn. Sorturn. Yeah. I love that fruit note in this. It's like a, it's a beautiful sweetness, um, but not like tart or anything. It's just this cherry, really ripe. It's a dark fruit. But I, I can't. It's somebody said I don't get cherry. It's more like to me like a, uh, uh, oh shoot, um, what is that? Um, <laughs> I like Tolly's called banana. What's the what's? Yeah, or like that like a dried can, fruit, like a peach. Yeah, dried peach or a dried um, dried apples. Uh, there's. I bet you that toasted oak like is what's. I know it's the sauterne, but is what's cranking this up a notch of that fruit sweetness. Maybe that's what happens. They finish it in the sauternes and then they said this is missing some sweetness and that's why it's only a month in the, the toasted or something. Yeah, it's four weeks. That's a pretty amazing. Um, the website says four months. Yeah. Really? Yeah, oh. Does it say four weeks on the bottle? It says four weeks on the bottle, yeah. Well, somebody's lying. Somebody's wrong. <laughs> that's detail. that's interesting. Months. The website says four months in toasted oak. That's and, a collector uh, bottle right there. It's gone. <laughs> Mm. Sounds like a class action lawsuit to me. <laughs> How many people actually pay attention? A case of free bottles will settle it. Marketing director fired. <laughs> hey, Charles. Yeah. Do you remember the, they had two of them, the Sauterne and the other one right next to it in the same collection? Do you remember what the other one was? Well, they had, um, they had the beer one from... Uh, from yeah, Michigan. What's the green or Goose Island? Goose Island. Yeah, they have the Goose Island collaboration. I didn't really like that one though. When we we did taste that one yeah. at the bar, yeah, that, that didn't do it for me. It didn't do it. No, because it was a Goose Island Guinness or something. It was, it was stout or, or stout? Was it? Yeah, yeah I think it was a stout. stout. Yeah, stout. yeah. Sometimes beer beer cast combos don't work well with whiskey. Stout typically does, but this one didn't like hit the mark. I don't know. We actually had that available in the shop to purchase the Goose Island, and I, I kind of said no on that one. Um, it's just, I don't know. It was, I mean, we did taste the Four Square, which was great, um, and actually that Chateau Labat I thought was really great. This would be fantastic. I would, geez, if we could get this, I'd be over the moon. But. Oh, I love that sweetness on the back end. Jeez, that's really good. Again, this isn't a bourbon. This is a combo of bourbon and rye. So they don't actually call this a bourbon. So it's 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 a blend of straight whiskeys. So you can put that in the Advent Carol and really screw everybody up. Yes, this would be an advent calendar screw up, but it's way too expensive for the advent calendar. <laughs> yeah, no age statement, even though. Yeah. No percentages either. So usually they're pretty good about giving you the. Yeah. Charles, what is the percentage of the bourbon and rye on this one? It doesn't say. 
It doesn't say? No. Okay. But I know you said 10-year bourbon and... Uh, ten year, ten year bourbon and six year rye. Finished, finished seven months in Sauterne, and then either four weeks or four months in Toasted Oak. Are they <laughs> flip, are they flip a coin? Kentucky. Uh, it said Indiana rye. Okay. Ten year Kentucky bourbon and six year Indiana rye. On the finish, I get a note like you get, and I never know what to call it, but like you get from a good ice wine. Oh, an ice wine. Dessert wine note. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of those are Rieslings, which you know, is are in Sauternes. Mm -hmm. This is good. Do you know what the quality of the sherry is? You said sherry, right? The, the barrel sanitation, the wine. The quality, yeah. I mean, just from what I read a little bit earlier today, um, I mean, it's second crew, so second growth, Bordeaux history. They go back to 1832. I mean, I'm sure they're pretty well respected chateau. I know for the most part, Bardstown works with some of the top producers around the world for their collaboration. So that's why I'm surprised they worked with Goose Island because Goose Island, I've never like really yeah. to be a good quality beer. That they're just somebody that's owned by Anheuser Busch. Yeah, no, I get that. I understand that. Um, I was a little surprised by that combination as well. Um, Oh, yeah. Who knows? Maybe just maybe, the scale of them, I don't know. Maybe it was a, a marketing yeah, yeah. I like to play thing, those. whatever. Maybe to get Bardstown more known. Mm -hmm. Did that, you know. Typically, these collaborations, um, well, the ones that are at the distillery are very small releases. They're not like big. I'm sure the Green, the Goose Island is a pretty big release. Um, I'm not sure how many bottles of this Doisy Dane are available, but um, pretty good. This was definitely my highlight of the night so far. Okay, we're going to move on. Um, so we're going to actually head to Louisville, Kentucky now um, to Peerless. Uh, Peerless is one of those really great distilleries that a lot of people know, but a lot of people still don't know. Um, they're, they're an older brand that was revived as well um, by, by a great grandson, Corky Taylor. I actually got him to sign this bottle. He's, he's usually there on Saturdays. Um, this last time we were there, uh, however... He's definitely showing his age. So I'm a little sad by that because I remember when I first met him, he looked a lot healthier than he did this last time. So hopefully he's he's good to go for a while. But uh, if you can get to Kentucky, go on a Saturday to Peerless because he's usually hanging out and he's definitely worth uh, getting to know. It was his father uh, who was actually General Patton's right-hand man in, in World War II and his father actually owns one of Patton's pistols, which is pretty cool. And he's very proud of that. Uh, but he's quite a character. And the family goes all the way back to owning Peerless back in the day. Um, and what's really special at Peerless, I mean, their, their regular small batch bourbon, I think, is pretty good, pretty solid. It's not cheap, but it's pretty solid. But it's their single barrels that are really, really fun. And they're not cheap either. Uh, most of their products that they sell at the distillery are around $130 up to $150. So definitely not inexpensive by any means, uh, especially for a non-age statement, you know, single barrels. Uh, that's, that's a pretty hefty, hefty price. But one of the cool things that they do is if you take the tour at Peerless, um, you actually can taste the single barrels that are available in their shop. So you're not just buying blind. Um, you're actually able to taste them and then decide if you really want to buy one or not. And for a while there, they were just releasing rye single barrels. 
because the rye came out first before bourbon did uh, with them. And um, but then they started releasing their bourbon single barrels, and it depends. I'll taste them both, and whichever one I like more, I'll buy one of one of them. Uh, I typically won't buy more than one because they're so expensive. But on this last visit, this was my favorite of the ones that we tasted. Uh, we didn't have a lot of time. We were kind of running out the door to go to Michter's, but um, we did get to try this one. And this one is called Spice Sugar Cane. And the tasting notes on the side say toasted brown sugar, candied poppy seed, and lemon spice. Um, and again, there's no age statement on this. Um, Corky signed the, it's the fourth generation. He says Corky Taylor fourth on here um so let's see what this one's about it's been a while since i've tasted this one so that's a single barrel right yeah single barrel no not double oak i did get and i'm saving it for a future tasting i got the double oak rye uh and their double oak products are really good um i'm not sure what i'm gonna pull out that double oak rye but um club barrel charles what's that club barrel yeah expensive very smooth oh so the abv on this one is uh 54.5 which is exactly the same abv of the last uh whiskey that we had so we're staying even keel on alcohol right now so this one tasted so much hotter to me than the last one than the last one yeah. Well, again, the last one was a combination of bourbon and rye that was also finished in a sweet yeah. wine barrel. So it's going to be a lot different. And then toasted oak on top of that. So this is more of your traditional high rye single barrel bourbon. You know, we're kind of getting back into regular bourbon now. Yeah. I know I'm in the minority with Peerless, but. It's too spicy for me. Their bourbons are just aggressive little pokers on my tongue. <laughs> I just, I appreciate it and I get it. There's, they're always very, there's so much depth and they're always really great. But the attack of my tongue with all peerless bourbons is like, aggressive to me well this one is called spice sugar cane <laughs> I know, but remember i've said this before they're just there they attack so I what thought. what in the process would cause or create that <laughs> well, high rye the yeah, distillation the rye. <laughs> choice you know barrel selection and maybe and blending they just might prefer that as a group they you know, to, to, to blend that way. Um, Cause it's been in the small batch releases. It's, I, uh, I respect it, but they can be a little top. They can be rough on my palate. Like I feel like my palate shot now <laughs> from all the spice. I, I, they definitely are bold, bolder whiskeys, whether it's the rye or the bourbon coming out of peerless. There is definitely barrel influence as well, uh, quite a bit. Um, and they are fairly high rye uh, whiskeys. I mean, they're just, it's kind of their thing. And, and again, you know, we get people that come into the shop all the time and they're looking for certain brands because those brands are more favorable to their profile and their palate. You know, this is going to be more appreciated by somebody who likes spice, who likes higher rye spice, um, you know, because so typically a high rye bourbon will be over 20 percent rye, um, 20 or above. So that's kind of the, the number. There's not a standard. No, there's not really a standard. No, there's. It's, yeah, I mean, they can go all the way up to mid 30s. Um, I mean, we've even had some that are, you know, almost half. Um, but 
typically with bourbon, you're going to want it to still be sweet. So they're not going to go too high with the rye, but um, like our tumbling dice was pretty high. Uh, that was our single barrel that we had in the shop. Really good. To me, the, the sugar tempers the spice quite a bit in this one. Yeah, the, the sweetness that I get with the spice makes my experience of the spice almost just like I'm drinking it at a higher proof, which I personally enjoy given my own you know personal taste. It, it makes the proof feel a little bit higher than yeah. it is. Um, I love it. I, I get the spice on the front, but then what the, the lingering is the sweetness. Yeah. I mean, if you keep in mind what they're calling this sugar cane, I mean, it definitely does taste like sugar cane to me. Like if I was just going to gnaw on a raw piece of sugar cane with that kind of earthiness or whatever that's behind it. Um, I don't know. It, I, I think it's actually a pretty good name for this barrel. Um, definitely has the spice. There's no question about that. Um, but there is that sweetness, but you kind of have to chew through the spice to get to it in a way, right? Yeah, the, the spice fades away, but the sugar lingers. I like this. It doesn't, the spice doesn't overpower. But there's a sweet. I don't know. I've, I've been a big fan of Peerless since they started releasing. And I, they are very expensive for what they are. Um, that's, I think, their one knock. Um, but they're in a very expensive city now. And they have to keep up with all these other big players. You know, you got Angels Envy on the other side. And, I mean, you've got all these things that you have to compete with now. So, um, Charles, what did you say this bottle was? Rent this price? is probably around one, 130. I bought two bottles, so I don't remember which one was more. They, the, the total price for both was almost $300. So um, I think this one was a little less expensive than the double oak rye that I bought as well, which we'll have at some point in the future. Um, the double oak bourbon, well, I bought two releases of the double oak bourbon over the past couple of years. That is really, really good. Um, fearless, fearless double oak bourbon? Yeah. Really solid. You know, the, the two years were different, but man, those were awesome. That's what I want for my birthday. I think the I one, just killed a bottle of that. The one from two years ago was my favorite. That was really good. Um, yeah, me too. All right. It's getting loud here. It's getting louder. I only have 10 people here, but it sounds like I've got 20 people here. We do not. <laughs> That's a bourbon crowd. They're rowdy. Hi, Holly. A Scotch crowd would be very quiet. No, they would not. <laughs> Ollie, I don't know if you can tell this, but you look like you're sitting in either a steam bath or a very smoky room. I don't. All I clicked was blur background, and it just made me fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been trying to clean the camera. I don't it must be an iPhone. At, at least it's not the bourbon that's making you fuzzy, right? I guess I'm just so plain that the Zoom is like, oh, she's part of the background. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, that distillery is for me. Okay. All right. <laughs> It's good. You're not supposed to like what everyone else likes. It's did you? Money. Did you go? Did we go to Peerless together? Not together. No. You've been though, right? Yeah, a while ago. Okay. I've not been back in a couple of years. You did the tour. Mm -hmm. 
No, I, I respect it. I told it's very there's tons of depth. It's a very well made whiskey. It's just an an assault. It is a sweet mash. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. <laughs> it's a sweet mash. <laughs> For those who don't know what sweet mash is, it means they clean their their uh, fermentation or uh, their mash uh, every with every one. It's a clean new mash. There's none of the old that goes with the new, which, which is what a, a sour mash would be when you're taking a little bit of the old and you're adding it to the new to try and keep some consistency of flavor. The sweet mash is more expensive to do because you have to clean everything out in between each run. Um, so, you know, Wilderness Trail does a sweet mash. So some people uh, think that sweet mash is better in general because it's just kind of giving you more unique flavor profiles, not that consistency that some people want, but... All right. Peerless has, Peerless has it painted on the wall. Yeah, it's a big deal there. Yeah. All right. So we're going to move on to number five. Number five whiskey. Uh, this was an expensive bottle. Um, this was also from Lux Row. So this is a bottle that looks like this. Um, we did one of these a couple of years ago. That was the last time I was able to get one of these. Um, these are small uh, releases, um, double barrel, 12 years. Um, this is barrel proof. This is 59.2%. So we're jumping pretty good to 118.4 proof. Um, it is, let's see here. Uh, it's just one barrel. This is one, one barrel that's been barreled twice. Um, double oaked. Oh, interesting. The barrel numbers are the same. Wow, that's weird. What? Well, so they have they have two barrel numbers, and they're both been aged since um, 2010, from uh, July 26th of 2010, and then they must blend those barrels together. But the barrel numbers are the same number, which is kind of weird. Um, we have another one of those mistake bottles, I think, that's worth $10,000. So we're drinking a $10,000 bottle because of the mistake they made. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but this is Kentucky bourbon. This is sourced as well. We don't know exactly from where. Um, but these are special bottling. So, you know, these are only available at the distillery, 12 year old. Again, whenever you get a 12 year old cash strength bourbon, that's really old. That's also, that's already, you're already talking about a really old bourbon that could also be on that verge of getting too oaky because that's what happens with bourbon once you get over 12 years, let alone 15. When you get over 15, you almost like forget about it uh, in terms of oakiness. So, I do remember on the last 12 year one that we did have from Lux Row, it was very oaky. So I'm very uh, curious to see if this one is that as well uh, or not. Um, it is quite dark, which is kind of nice. Um, double oak or double barrel, sorry, not. Just emptied it out of one barrel and poured it right back in. Hmm. Well, but it says that both were aged since 2010. So that doesn't make sense. It's just two barrel, double barrel. It's not it's not double oak, it's just double barrel. But the barrel numbers are the same. That's what gets me confused. But um so so 12 years, that's a long time. So like every year do they like taste it and say not not quite right yet. Yeah, I mean, they probably set aside barrels that they think have the opportunity to get better over time because you have to monitor, you know, once you get over four or five years, you need to monitor those barrels for where, what, how to use them. Yeah. Are you going to use them in a younger whiskey? Are you going to put them in an older? Are they going to be part of a blend? You know, there's, there's lots of things that you can do 
with those barrels over time. So yeah, you, there's probably some that need more time. You know that they taste them and they're like, "Oh, this will be better at older." Yes. Um, same with scotch. You have the same exact thing happening in scotch. You know, you can, you have to monitor them constantly, and you can kind of tell if they need if they're going to be older or not. You know, as they. So, so do you think with the, the climate controlled uh, rick houses that they're doing now that you're going to see older bourbon eventually because they're controlling it better than the. Uh, the open air ones? I mean, look at Michter's, right? I mean, Michter's is climate controlled. Um, you know, they're, they're doing some older stuff. I don't know. I mean, yeah. Bourbon can only be aged for so long, period. I mean, it's an oak thing. You're using new charred American oak. New char is going to impart a lot of flavors a lot faster than used barrels. So you can only go so long with bourbon, period, even in climate control. Okay. You know, it's, you might be able to prolong it a little bit, but not much. It's not going to make that big of a difference. If anything, the climate control, like Michter's, what Michter's does is they heat cycle in the winter. So they're trying to get more interaction with the wood during the winter. They're tr actually trying to speed up the process by doing that. Um, you know, so climate control isn't always going to be the, if it's always, you're not going to actually, yeah, I don't know how much age, how much time you're going to save actually by doing that in general. Um, I think if anything, you're trying to make it faster. Is there any information on the mash bill? Here? The temperature in the winter time and make it. It sounds like you'd be speeding it up versus, you know. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I think climate control would do that. Um, again, you're talking new charred oak. I think that's the key. You know, in Scotland, they're using second fill, third fill barrels that can sit with whiskey for 30, 40, 50 years and not take on too much oak because they've been used already for so long. And the temperature is not very... And the temperature is exactly not making it interact as much with the wood as it does in Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is pretty tasty. I have to say, this is pretty pretty solid. This is a good one. What do you guys think of this one? Uh, I don't know. I haven't had it yet. You haven't had it yet? We're sharing. We're sharing. We're visiting. Wow. <laughs> Since when has the in-person group been slower than the online group? Jeez. I'm ready. I'm going for the next one November. I think oh. I'm What? Oh, nice. <laughs> next week, I'll let you know. Yeah. So that's what we're looking at as far as I can. That's not kind of that together. Can we go another how many bottles can we bring back? No, because I'm driving. Last time I drove. This has a beautiful uh, palette. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 this is very well balanced for a single barrel or double barrel, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. The, the I just wrote down well balanced. I, I really think it's too. Right. For me, the mint starts to overtake it on the finish, but I really like the pack. For 12 years, you're not getting too much oak on this. So the minimum sure. is 12 years, right? We don't know how old the old one is. Well, it says it's they're both distilled in 2010 or oh, barreled shit. in 2010. So really? these are 12, this is 12, 13. Well, yeah, 12 years old. 12, at a minimum. Okay. This is hot. It's high. Oh, hot? Well, it is hot. It's 59%. There you go. 59.2. We're not, we're almost to hazmat. We almost need our orange vests when we drink this, but not quite. And we could wear maybe, you know, some kind of protective hat, but we don't need the plastic hard hat yet. We're not the Lego people yet. We will be with our next drink. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Even if I had a hazmat suit, if I drank much of this, I wouldn't have it on for long. Need the placards when you can. 
Well, we were, we were talking about how, how what what is so the average proof in our shop? Like, if you were to take all of our bottles in the shop and average them out, what, what is our proof? What is First Fill's proof? And I mean, I, I was kind of thinking maybe it's around bottled and bond 50%, you know, 100 proof. I mean, we, Holly says we have a lot of New World, we have a lot of Irish and Japanese that's lower proof. No, okay. So, you know, it's possible we're right at that 50% level. But the story goes is that Charles and I looked at the shelves two days before Christmas and realized we had nothing below 50% ABV. Well, for American. <laughs> for American. And that is is a bit of a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a spreadsheet that can spit, spit out that number? You must. Yes. You would really have to explain to me why that's a problem. <laughs> well, because you don't you're, you're scare a minority. Away either. <laughs> most, well, wait. Most, yeah. most new people who come into the shop are not used to cash strength. Yes. Here it is. What's that? Is there anything else other? <laughs> and there, there, there's some great bourbon. We were a, we obviously some great whiskey at 43, 46% ABV, but we just realized that we didn't have any. Holly, the truth is there's not. <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> you can bring some Elmer T. Lee. You can have some of that. Remember, Charles, what we do in the whiskey club is not normal. I know. <laughs> What we're all doing right now is not the norm. <laughs> kind of worry when the insurance company says you need a special building for solvents. You know, it's it's normal for us. I'm finding it harder to accommodate. <laughs> We're very lucky, both Daves. We're very well. First, David, we have a very high insurance plan <laughs> for our shop. So, and Dave Tobias, we um, we're very lucky to have a group like this to imbibe in these things. But this is not the average whiskey drinker. <laughs> Amen. It, we, it says something when your scotch brings down your average ABV. We told my brother, because we got him the two stacks, because he's a huge Irish whiskey fan, but he's never had cast strength, I think, anything. We told him that he could feel free to dilute it with a pipette of water, like a ice cube, but we'll see if he <laughs> actually internalizes that and does it. Oh, and that's sixty-five percent. That is not normal Irish. <laughs> but it doesn't. It doesn't taste sixty-five though. Well, it doesn't. I have it, and it does not. That's definitely over fifty percent though. All right. I love this. I thought this was actually really good. This was my second favorite of the night. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I still that Doisy Dane was before we leave this one. I just added like four drops of water, it's even better. Really, yeah. All right, add water to this one. Try it. I drop which one? This one, yeah, it's better with the water. Is it? Uh, Rich, how did it change for you? My annoy when you say better in like what way for you? Um, it uh. Eight zero. It mellowed out the finish. You know, for me, the sort of the mint, which probably is from the ABV, mm -hmm. sort of overwhelmed the finish. And I get more of the the flavor notes on the finish now with the water. This is not one of those things you can sit down and have multiple. Bottles. All right, that convinces me. <laughs> oh, you're right. This is this is really good with water. <laughs> this is like the nose is better too. This seems like two bills. What's that? Is like two bills? Yeah, this one was like um, it's probably one seventy. Yeah, it's up there. I mean, all of these are Kentucky in general. I mean, bourbon in general is so freaking expensive now. I mean, it's crazy. I remember going to Lux Row four or five years ago, and it was everything was two thirds of what it is now. I mean, everything's jumped quite considerably. It's not 10%. It's 
20, 30, 40 percent. And for Brooks and Rumble, like 70 bucks now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, we have old Ezra, uh, the seven year bourbon and rye in the shop. And those used to be allocated, um, and they recently became unallocated, and we were able to get some. Um, really, really great, really, really tasty, full of flavor, really bold, rich, kind of just really grain forward. And they're, what are they, $80? $80? $85 80, $85. And I mean, they're fantastic. They're probably about $20 more than they should be, but they're also available now where they weren't available not long ago. So everything's just gone up. I mean, everything, everything has just gone up. Um, it doesn't matter if it's bourbon or scotch, it's just whiskey in general. Um, the price is, just keeps creeping. So. All right, so that was pretty good. All right, let me get to this next one here. Well, this one's going to be. Did Holly like that last one? Holly, did you like the last one? These are my scores. We have a question in the audience. I did. We yeah. <laughs> I did. I, I'm kind of surprised, but I liked that Doisy Dane. <laughs> Probably because it reminded me of Scotch. <laughs> What? No, I yeah, I liked the last one. <laughs> no. Just reminded her of Scotch. No, she's kidding. No. Charles, is the Bardstown available? What's that? The Bardstown we had available or not? Only at the distillery. Yeah. And I don't know if they still have it or not. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna move on to uh Brooklyn. But we're not going to talk about pizza, and we're not going to talk about whatever else is in Brooklyn. We're going to focus on whiskey. <laughs> Coming out of the Naval Yard. I've been there. It's an awesome place. You should all it is. It's a great place. Um, all right. So we're going to the 2023 release of King's uh, County uh, Barrel Strength Bourbon. So every year they release a um, edition uh, of their bourbon at cash strength. Um, this is a blend. It's composed of 10, 15, 30, and 53 gallon barrels between four and seven years old. Uh, one of the great things about um, Kings County is their mash bill. Uh, we're really big fans of what they're doing down there. I, we really think what they what they have is very tasty. It's eighty percent new corn, New York corn, so it's it's local corn, and it's twenty percent malted barley. So you have a very high malted barley content. You don't have any rye. No rye. No rye. Oh shit! It's gonna be straight. It's gonna be straight. So this is eighty percent New York corn, twenty percent malted barley. This is hazmat. This is 66.2%. 132.4 proof. Yeah, buddy. No way to go out. No way to start the year without drinking a hazmat bourbon. I mean, come on, right? This is That's right. That's this, right. Is, this is America. We're going to drink hazmat bourbon right now to start the year. What what exactly is the line where you become hazmat? <laughs> uh, pretty much one twenty five proof. <laughs> no. You know, if it singes your nose, that, in. you'll get better. <laughs> yeah. So again, just keep that in mind. If this is your first bourbon of the day. <laughs> Uh, which it's not. Um, this is one that would really knock you over. Um, not a good breakfast bourbon. <laughs> There's no bad breakfast bourbon. Actually, this could, be, this could be really good in oatmeal or something like that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Some of it in your oatmeal. Another like Brooklyn rules. Oh, there's many. All right, I, Luke, I let's hear your King review. I would have a wee New York breakfast. Oh, yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Need Luke's review. Oh, He's the king of Kings County. 
I, I, I think it's awesome. For me, it sits between the 2022, which I, I'm going to have to try it against that in a second, and uh, the version which I had down at the shop yesterday, which was awesome. That was like the top of the top. It had a little more fruit than this, red fruit for me, but uh, yeah, I think it's awesome. I just love the high malt. It's different. It's like unique. It's like a, a different flavor you get in bourbon, but it still squares with bourbon, and I just think it's special. I think, you know, when you have um, a hazmat bourbon like this, um, and it is, the we do have one bottle left, and we can get more of this as well. Uh, it's $99.99, so it's a $100 bottle, but again, not too crazy. Um, for that taste profile and that high proof, it's worth it. Like, this is one of those that I would spend a hundred dollars on, you know, not 150 or 200, but if you want a special bottle that's gonna last a long time because of the high proof, you can't just drink this bottle in a night <laughs> or two. Uh, you know, it's this is one that will give you some longevity. This is what I would call kind of consider value from a proof flavor profile perspective you know yeah i totally agree i mean there's there's so many bourbons that taste fairly similar to one another with slight variations but that king's the king's county stuff just has its own distinct personality yeah. this is actually better than the eve's boring than we're taking up a, a boat we want to get a bus trip to go down king's county brooklyn okay uh, uh we can do that all right we're gonna do a trip to brooklyn with the club uh, we're gonna we're gonna rent a, a big bus that benny will drive oh uh, i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> okay, i'm gonna to get to ellen beach Money gardens for some pizza we're, we're gonna go to travel bar in brooklyn we're gonna go to king's county and we're gonna go to Spumoni gardens how about that a whiskey and pizza tour what a day. I mean, you can't beat that. That would be like the ultimate. I mean, my God, what a day. So we'll figure that out. Let's plan that for 2024. We can do it in a day. If we get a bus, we can do it in a day. I know a lot of folks have been to the distillery, but we can go to the blending facility in Brooklyn and actually yeah. see where Ryan blends. Too. Yeah, yeah. we'll do a real great experience at Kings County. Um, we'll definitely go. No, we're not doing Hill Rock. Well, we can do Hill Rock another time, but uh, yeah, no, that. No, no, we'll do 10 Mile another time too. They, yeah. I got to keep that secret from my mom. She'll have me bring back 20 pounds of soil. <laughs> <laughs> what about Brooklyn? I actually was at Kings <laughs> County in early December. Oh, and I swear oh. they did not have <laughs> any barrel strength bottles. <laughs> <for sale. laughs> that's that's what you do. We could maybe throw in New York distilling. Or Widow Jane, or something like that. We'll figure it out. We'll make it a we'll make it a real day. We'll make it, and then we'll end at Wegmans and have dinner at Wegmans. <laughs> dinner where? What? <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah. You mean America's number one grocery store? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go to Wegmans, and you can get whatever you want at the Serve Yourself a la Carte buffet. <laughs> Sounds like we're gonna, we're gonna end our trip at the 7-Eleven in Tokyo. Uh, we're gonna get egg salad sandwiches. And Charles doesn't get it, Rich. He's not from Rochester. I, I gotta tell you, Hal, you know, I went to college in Rochester and my roommate was in the supermarket business in New York City. And even in the late 70s, Wegmans was the leader in the industry and it's only gotten a bigger gap since then. I love Wegmans, and we had we had a lot of them in New Jersey. Wegmans is like going to Olive Garden. <laughs> I'm sure they love that comparison. So I stockpile Wegmans products when I drive to Syracuse on my way back from Michigan, and the peanut butter is unbeatable. I've got like a warehouse of this shit. Uh, <laughs> Wegmans is in. Wegmans We're going. Is it. <laughs> the only thing I miss about New Jersey is Wegmans. 
nothing else. Saratoga yeah. Whiskey Club yeah. shopping trip. This is why we have people from across the country watching our YouTube videos because we're talking about Northeast grocery stores. Not the whiskey. It has nothing. We have Wegmans. Have I Alec Baldwin was on Letterman North Carolina. Once, and his mother lives in Syracuse. And Letterman asked him, "Well, why don't you move your mother to California? You could you could afford it." And he said, "She won't go. There's no Wegmans in California." <laughs> nice. Did we mention we're all sponsored by Wegmans? <laughs> yes, Wegmans is the official sponsor of the Saratoga Whiskey Club. Uh, they don't know that yet. But, uh, It'd be great to get a sponsorship from Wegmans. And then the recording of this I did do some tastings at the liquor stores that Wegmans owns that are next to. Oh, that's an underground secret. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, but I did a number of Diageo tastings at those stores, so um, we won't say anything, Wegmans, unless you sponsor us. So, so Charles, if you set up a Brooklyn tour in New York, what uh, you cut out for a second? No, I'd be happy to do the Brooklyn tour, but I'm not going up to Albany to take a box. No, 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 you could just meet us in Brooklyn, yeah. Why not? The more Depending the when you do it, I might be sure in Brooklyn too. We'll figure it out. We'll give a, enough advance notice so that everybody can join in on the fun. I actually have my brother meet us down there. He lives in Manhattan. He loves we'll Carolina. probably look at like uh, April or something like that. April or May. We'll figure it out. We've got to do Lost Lantern too. Yes. If you're planning it, just so you know, I'll be in Romania April 21st and bring back some whiskey from there again. <laughs> All right. Well, we need to do a part two Car Carpathian tasting. So. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap up. Um, I got to just get back to the, the grind here and make sure everybody's out of here. So. <laughs> Um, I, hope I put it in the back. chat, Charles, that there's one bottle of the Barrel Strength Kings, and that if anyone, so there's only one online, uh, if it's still there, if, and if anyone wants it, we can get more of it, so just email us. How much is that? $99.99. It's $100. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's yeah. one left online, um, but like Holly said, there's more. I think there's there's some available. We don't know how much is available, but there should be. Some I think that's available. they release their barrel strength bourbon twice a year. I think it's just once. Just once. Yeah. It's always towards the end of the year. So. Um, yeah, but yeah, there you go. All right, guys, it's been fun. Uh, yeah. Happy New Year. Um, Happy New Year. We have a lot of tastings coming up. Stay tuned. We've, we're going to announce one probably tomorrow. Um, and it will be available on Zoom as well. Um, it's going to be a brand, a really great brand. Tasting. Thanks to Dave Tobias. He'll know it right away. So. With Jared. Um, so, uh, yeah, stay tuned. We'll be here. Come. All right. All right. Have a good night. 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 Good night.